Cause I'm free, free falling. That was the solo album. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, So, Mike Campbell. Mike Campbell, who's that? You love Mike Campbell. I love Mike Campbell. You, um, so, so, yeah, we're going to talk about Mike Campbell. Let's talk about him. Jonathan has talked about Mike Campbell all the time. One of the best parts players in the history of American rock and roll. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I might give you that. amazing, perfect parts. And what's on your arm, too? I won't back down. Yeah, so I won't back down. Um, th- yeah, yes. so he, he likes it. Tom Petty, Mike Campbell. This, so we had to do this. We have to talk about him. Um, Oddly enough, not a Heartbreaker song. I know, weird. But Mike Campbell is playing the slide, and in the video, he's actually playing George Harrison's Strat that the really? custom shop has just done. Yeah. So he's playing a Gretsch for part of the video. He's playing George Harrison's Strat some. Ringo is playing drums on that video, by the way. My son is obsessed with this video, so we watch it all the time. Um, because Ringo's like drilling a little hole in the globe in the world, and for some reason he thinks I that's cool. I do remember that. Remember? It's funny, yeah. And so, so yeah, Mike Campbell is actually chilling, playing the little slide parts with with Harrison and all those guys. And like I remember listening to Tom Petty as a young person, yes. and being like, the guitar was always really cool. Yes. Because Tom Petty was sort of, yeah, he was he was sort of popular in that time. That that to to me not like the earlier Tom Petty, but the '80s and '90s stuff that I heard with the Heartbreakers. Um, and it wasn't music like that. Was not happening. No. It was a different. No, it was, it was totally different. He didn't fit within hair metal. Didn't fit within grunge. Didn't fit within like it wasn't. Even, it's not even classic rock. It's like it's yeah. It's because he write they, the the songs are great, and then you look at the guitar parts were always really interesting. Uh, so so fun story about how I became aware of Mike Campbell. Fire away. I'm almost ashamed to say this, but there was a time before I I knew enough to have an undying love for for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and Mike Campbell. I, you know, I was just a kid. I was in high school. Um, it was all the 90s music, you know? It right. was Matchbox 20. It was the Wallflowers. I loved the Wallflowers. I had figured out okay. that, like, Jacob Dylan was Bob Dylan's son. I thought that was cool. I didn't even know that why. That is cool. Because it is cool, right? There's this one song called Sixth Avenue Heartache that mm-hmm. I was in love with, and I just thought the guitar, the slide, and the Dobro stuff. Mike Campbell? See, I was like, what is that sound? I love that sound. That's- I do a little digging because this is pre the Google, right? Yes. I didn't just pull up my phone. Did a little digging. Turns out this guy named Mike Campbell from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers is playing the slide guitar on that song. Man, I never knew that. He is. That's so I funny. said, who is this dude? And then there's this another. We, so around that time, right, I also I had a great love for the Eagles. I know that you don't particularly love the Eagles, but I love the Eagles, and I love Don Henley's solo stuff. I'm airing all I mean, of my dirty you know, laundry. Dirty, is dirty secrets. A great here. song. So yes, let's just go all dirty my, laundry uh, all the way. My guilty pleasures here right now in this video. But there's a song, a, a very small song called "Boys of Summer." It was a minor hit. It yeah. was actually a huge song. I always forget that's Don Henley. It's I think Don of Bri- Henley. I, Brian Adams, my brain does somehow for that. But yeah. Mike Campbell wrote that and brought it to Tom Petty. That's a great song. And I thought, wow. This Mike Campbell guy, he not is only legit. plays guitar, but he can write a damn good song. Right, and he wrote—I think he just wrote the music, and, and Henley wrote the lyrics. But he, you know, that was something that he had worked up that he thought the Heartbreakers would do. Um, so he—he he is a great songwriter. He's a great parts player, but I think that gets overshadowed because he's been with Tom Petty since the very beginning, since it was Mud Crutch before. Yeah, I thought it was, it was like, I thought it was like the Florida Mud Suckers. What was it called? <laughs> it was called Mud Crutch. Uh, and there's this great story if you watch the crutch. Mud crutch. One one word off the letter off of mud crotch. It's, it's almost it's, mud crotch. It's hard. It's, okay, go. They on. said they wanted like the filthiest, you know, like name they could like come up with. Like when your dog has mud butt and you're trying to take yeah. it out hunting and it's, it's over. But I think a lot of people don't know unless you have watched the um, the wonderful uh, Running Down a Dream documentary, which is awesome. You should go and watch it and learn all these things. Um, but Petty was a lead guitar player. No. Oh. And he was like the lead guitar player in in the band. Until this sort of like gangly kid, they they go to meet, and I, I think I don't remember what I think he's playing like Strat copy or something. Comes out right. and plays Johnny Be Good, and just crushes Hired. them all. And they're like, "Oh my God, you can play everything!" <laughs> so, '76 they become Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Campbell's with them the whole time, and these guys they have one of the coolest I think sort of songwriting partnerships. So so Mike wrote songs right. with Tom. You know they wrote some stuff together. I think probably Mike's role in the band was helping to arrange things and he writes these iconic guitar parts that we all sing and hum you know they are iconic it's every beginning guitar player 
to like advanced guitar play, you learn Tom Petty songs. You do. You and, all and learn Free Fallin' in the wrong key. That's Tom Petty. But, um, but you know, but, but then all the licks too. Like I mean, every lick, it's and slide work is it's it's accessible seeming. Right. Unlike you know Derek Trucks. But but it's not easy to do. I think it's tricky. Well, you know, like I, obviously, my we cover a lot of Tom Petty in my my band, and you know we sort of even when we play popular songs, we I didn't tend know to. It was Tom to Petty. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we tend. To, they're they're barely recognizable, but they're there. Uh, we, you know, we we make things our own and and, and jam, and and some would say ruin them, but you know we do it. But but the Tom Petty stuff, you have to play. The Mike Campbell licks because they're part of the song. He, he's a great study in a guitar player being part of the song. I know it's weird because they're all sort of inbred, but he's always reminding me of George Harrison. Yeah, that's one of his heroes. I mean, that's okay. I mean, like I, I sort of learned that later in life, but just just his playing style. He, you're like, oh, like he didn't do like an Eddie Van Halen lick, or he didn't no. do a, a Stevie Vaughan or Joe Bonamassa thing. That's not. But he makes the song, the song, the song. And like we're gonna do lots of series on these artists that right. sort of do that, and those are what that's what fascinates us too, and just how guitar players don't have to fit this mold of like, I'm just gonna shred Ted Nugent right. on it. And like, this, his, his art services the song. It services the song. And you know, when you see him live, he play, have these extended yeah, outro good. jams. He's great, you know, and he <laughs> is. But, but another hero of his, Jerry Garcia. <laughs> You're speaking my language. I thought you would enjoy well, that. Didn't know if you know, but so, so big George Harrison fan, Big, big, big Jerry Garcia fan. And one of our viewers out there, he's cool. This when our video about the jam bands, I was talking about like Jerry's chromatic playing. He said like, "No, I'm more of a diatonic." I'm like, "You're right." That's um, fascinating. I, I, I read your comments there. That was that was a, you're totally right there. Um, and I, you can hear that in Mike's playing too. You hear it in Mike's playing, especially in those long, extended outros sometimes. Now, the thing that I love about Mike, maybe more than anything else, this is weird. His tone. I, I was hoping you would talk about that. Tone. Now, there's a guy in Nashville, if you're watching, his name is Jeff Heim. Okay. And he is like the best amp tech in the whole world. He's amazing. I love him. Jeff, if you're there, I, I love you. Um, You'll be he, on fret buzz someday, knows, probably. Probably. He knows that I love him. He makes great amps. But he calls he calls like players like that, or, or bands like Tom Payton and Heartbreakers, like tone bands. And okay. it's funny because I think Jeff has actually worked on some of Mike's amps but so i mean mike was maybe the first guy that i was really in love with who didn't have big stacks you know it was a wall of small like fender mostly fender combo amps fender tweet amps and even weird things like what was that little fender excelsior you know yep, he had one yep. of those in his live rig and so he was switching between all these different amps and guitar combinations to get these great tones instead of like a marshall stack and a few pedals it's, well, it's like, different he amp was like tones. he like has that vintage sound too and it's like in the time of you know he's coming late 70s and then the 80s is completely like, you know, we're, they're getting away from tube amps entirely. Yes. Like, you know, it's when poison is king and there's like a wall of crates with this horrible grating sound. And I love C.C. DeVille. He'll get a video one day. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> love him. He's one of my heroes. I think he's fantastic. C.C., your the video's top. coming. Don't worry. Um, but no, Mike Campbell's tone, it, it is. It's, it's amazing. amazing. Every, it sound, and I don't know how they engineer it either because it just, it sounds like the amp is supposed to sound on the records. Like you're there it's in sound, the room. Like you, you know, all, all of you that are guitar players that, that watch these silly videos of us blathering, it's that when you play a guitar amp in your room, it's there's nothing like it. You record it, it sounds wrong. It does, it and you're like, thin. why am I so horrible? Why do I sound so bad? You but, don't. <laughs> but Mike, uh, Mike has figured out a way to to make it. Well, and I mean, you know, it's just I remember listening to some of those tones, and he, again, he was another guy that I listened to, and I realized, wow. He's got this singing, amazing guitar tone, but there's not that much gain. Like, this is way cleaner right. than I thought guitars are supposed to sound. Um, and there's just something sort of magical about that. I've seen him live with, with Tom Petty. Well, I mean, it's amazing live as well. So, well, I mean, that's the trick that you were talking about, like, not so much gain. That's the trick that all of us fall into. I mean, we're not going to turn do, that gain up. No, we're not going to, we're not going to do a thing on Jimmy Page because it's been done to the hilt. But, like, the, the magic of Jimmy Page is like, he kind of like, isn't that overdriven. AC, it's AC. kind of clean. Not that over Yeah, like, and Jimmy Page, like, <laughs> and a lot of his tone is like his volumes turned down on his Les Paul when he's using Les Paul. Because yeah. he started off as a tele player. He liked that tele right. sound. And he sort of, he lives in that in between pickup position on his Les Paul a lot for those rhythmic parts. And it's fascinating. He just turns the volume down a bit. And it's not as distorted as everyone thinks. Like, Marshalls, JCM 800, gain all the way right. up. It's, that's not Jimmy Page. It's, go back and listen to those tones. 
So if you dig Mike Campbell's tone, there's a fantastic series on YouTube where it's him. Oh, cool. And he's like sitting in like the stairwell of his house. And he's bringing out all these crazy vintage guitars, and he's telling you like what records that they um, played what guitars on. And some of them are crazy, like old Rickenbackers and those old like box yes. guitars and the electric sitar things. And it's he's, like, he's like talking Jack about White before Jack White's Jack White. <laughs> kind of, he was, you know. <laughs> he's talking about that stuff, how he gets some of his tones, and you just you get to see his collection, which is really really. Um, that's cool. cool. I, we might watch that later instead of doing work. I mean, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, so we can do it. Again, we can't do that. Watch his Instagram as well. Because he's got a great Instagram right now, and okay. he's been during the whole, you know, crazy situation this year. It's just him. He's sitting there. He's playing songs. He's singing random songs. Have you done him on fret buzz? I have. I don't you've know if not, I have actually. Because his Instagram, it kind of is breaking the rules. I've watched. Not, I'm, I'm sure. Know. I mean, there are YouTube videos of him, but I don't think they're his. Yeah, because I, like, I think, I think I've seen all 17 of your fret buzzes at this point. I and I try to keep them within within the week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're right. I gotta, hey, Mike, I gotta get follow us on the, the parameters. Um, but so, so that's. I mean, all valid reasons we love and Mike I, Campbell. And I, I will say, like, his playing is so tasteful. It's it's it's. it's, it's, it's even when he goes on these long extended things, you can you can always sing it. You can always hum it. It's always in my brain. He, he writes, it's George Harrison again. He has that melodic solo writing, which some artists are lucky if they get one. You know, I put Slash, like some of his solos are phenomenal. Right. You know, like the Sweet Child of Mine is still one of the best rock and roll. You know, it's a different genre entirely, but it's, we all know it, we all love it. Yeah. And it's composed brilliantly. Yeah. From a kid with like a cool haircut and a snake on his shoulders. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, I mean, John, Mike Campbell's got the cool dreadlocks now. He does. Right? I mean, Mike, Mike's always look cool. He's always. He, look, cool. he reminds me of the um, the Mad Hatter. He is. He's you know, like, like kind of like the Mad Hatter. Yeah. A little bit. I know Tom Petty played that in the video, and don't come around here no more. But, but Mike Campbell sort of lives that. He, he sort is, of is the Mad that. Hatter. <laughs> and like your tones are sick. You know, your playing's great. You've inspired more people than you realize. And it's like I think if you're a Mike Campbell fan out there too, like it's it's never weird to actually send him messages that. Do you like really inspire? It's sure amazing. Like they will read them if you send it to his manager or whatever, it will get to him somehow. You send it to him directly. That's, that's what Instagram's for. He'll read it. Like and it, it, it matters. Will. Like let him know that you, he affected your musical journey and maybe made you a better person. Yes. Weird. Because I think Mike is a good person. He seems like he a too. really everything nice we, dude. Everything we know. He about loves him. animals. He's got that pedal with JHS. The money goes to help animals. He's, he just seems like a cool dude. My wife had a dream that we were both art students the other night, and that like I you just, and I. No, my, my wife and I were art students. Okay. Sorry, you're not okay. in the but, um, And then all I did was just go around with pictures of my dead dog everywhere. So I, when you said animals, I just love, I love animals too. <laughs> so, and I miss my little, my little King Charles. Peace, Sue, come back one day. I'll see you again. Sorry. But um, Mike, thanks for all the, the decades of goodness you put out there for us. Yes. And he's still doing it. Check out the Dairy Knobs. That's his band that's been around forever. Check out, he's playing with Fleetwood Mac still, I guess. Amazing. Which is kind of crazy. But anyways, let us know in the comments why you love Mike Campbell or what your thoughts are. We always enjoy the, the conversations and the threads on these sort of videos. Thank you, Mike Campbell. I love you personally. Weird. It's kind of strange, but it's true. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you don't miss our videos in the future. We will see you next time. We're out.